But honey, if you've seen that first video that I posted, I was doing it one-handed. I didn't even know what I was filming. I was just filming to film. everyone welcome back to my channel for those that don't know me my name is Beverly and for those of you guys returning thank you guys so much for joining me today as you guys can see already by the title of the video I'm gonna go ahead and talk about some things that helped me grow my business how to grow your social media and just kind of how to get out there and get exposure essentially so I thought that'd be interesting topic to talk about and of course along the way I will also throw in a few tips and tricks here and there but before we go ahead and get started if you guys are not already subscribed please consider subscribing to my channel and turn on your post notifications bell to be notified every time I upload a video so with that being said let's go ahead and get started before we get started I do have my notes here but I wanted to quickly talk about a little background on how I started this of course if you guys have seen my previous video on how I started my business and everything I kind of give you guys a little background on all that so if you guys are interested to know my story and how it all started go ahead and check that video out but for the purpose of this one, I will be just strictly talking about how I started my social media and everything. Um, as for whenever I started my social media, talking on Instagram mainly, that's where I started um, promoting my business, just started um, posting on there. So what I did, I didn't really just open up a new Instagram account. I already had like a backup account that I was not using for whatever it was. So I went ahead and just converted that one into my business one. I, of course, I changed the name. Um, as you guys know already, my business name is Invites by Bebs and More, LLC, of course. And it all started out because I was wanting to just focus on strictly invitations, party stuff, and things like that. And that's kind of the direction that I was going for. But because of the pandemic and everything going on, of course, there wasn't any parties going on. So I kind of stopped that. It came to like a complete halt, 100%, just because everything was shutting down. There was no parties being done. And there was just, I felt like at the time, there was not really much room for me to grow in that aspect as far as the invitations and party supplies went so I kind of stopped it and just kind of like came to the conclusion that I would just be like a general crafter crafting on several things of course whenever I started my Instagram and I changed the name over to invites by Bebs, I just thought it was something that was available of course I looked to make sure but because also at the time that was the name of my business so I made sure I looked it up it wasn't available to anyone else so I went ahead and took it so of course my Instagram name at the time was invites by Bebs, which it still is and I kind of just went with that as for the aesthetic of my Instagram it was not planned it was just random posts that I was doing at the beginning honestly I'm not gonna lie I started posting in March of 2020 but I really wasn't selling or promoting myself as far as like a service or a product that I was giving out just because at that time I was scared yes it's okay to be scared but I noticed that you eventually have to get out there once you start making your products you kind of have to start posting more to be consistent and so also potential customers can see and they would want to purchase from you so looking back at my posts as you guys can see here they were just literally invitations that I was posting at the beginning whenever I wasn't really selling anything or really knowing what I was going to do to start with I obviously was thinking I was going to be doing invitations I was going to be doing you know just different little tutorials on how I was making the invitations and also like setting up for party and events because at the time that's what I was focusing on making my business about and also just wanting to do setups and like do invitations mainly but of course that didn't work out so here in April of 18 of 2020 I made a first shirt my very first shirt for my nephew I was so proud as you can see it's a baby shark and I was like very proud of myself because I'm like okay this is cute girl do you notice the background though it was just on a towel and I was like okay no People cannot take me serious, but honestly, I was super proud of that moment, and at the time, I didn't care how my posts looked like, and I would just post to post. Um, and then after that, I made stickers. My stickers at the time were not even good. I don't even know if it cut out correctly on the Cricut, to be honest, because it looks super Cricut. But you know what? It's a thought that counts. I was super excited for myself because I was already trying to make stickers and shirts, and I thought I was doing really good. And then I continued just making shirts for the family and everything until finally, April 24th of 2020, I made my first sale, making a t-shirt for a customer, which I again posted. So at the beginning, as you guys were looking, I wasn't really taking my Instagram 
I'm serious. I was just posting to post and then just mainly posting things that I was kind of starting. So instead of me like really from the beginning focusing on my Instagram, thinking of the aesthetic that I wanted to go for, I was just posting random things. And then over time, I started getting sales. Yes, I started selling more shirts and custom items because that's what I was comfortable with at the time since I had made one shirt. I was like, okay, it can't be this hard. And I just continued to kind of do more and more shirts. And that's kind of how my business started to expand just by doing t-shirts now the promotion side what I was doing at the beginning I did not have a business page for Facebook I just had my Instagram page but a lot of local people I have noticed they didn't really have Instagram and if they did it wasn't something where I would pop up on their newsfeed and they would miraculously see okay this girl's from here and they would want to purchase no I just felt like it was more of my followers that I had from my personal page that would follow me to my business just to give me a follow I think it was more of that but in reality in the worlds of having a successful business Instagram was not cutting it at the time because I probably had less than 100 followers and my posts weren't eye captivating because if I look back now and I see an Instagram like that I probably wouldn't be interested in purchasing either just because I would be like mm, this girl looks like she's more like learning how to do things rather than her already knowing what she's talking about and confident in her work and I can tell you now, if I look back at the old me a year ago today, I would have looked at me with not confidence. I would have seen a girl with no confidence, but maybe something in her wanting to learn. Because now I can tell you that I am more confident in my work. And whenever someone asks for something, I can automatically determine saying yes or no, I can do that. And I am confident to say with a clear yes or no. So most of my customers at the time were from Facebook, but what I was doing since I did not have a Facebook business page, I was just mainly promoting on my personal Facebook page and also adding my products to the marketplace through my personal Facebook just to kind of get out there and to get sales. And to be honest, it does work and it still works till this day to do that because now Facebook marketplace is not really much about, oh, I have an old chair I want to sell. Oh, I have this I want to sell. Now a lot more people and small businesses are using it to kind of get out there and now they even offer shipping which I think is really cool because I don't even know if back then whenever I started using it maybe a couple of years back if they really had that already but I really do think it's an opportunity to grow and get connected more with your local community first if you're comfortable with that and then eventually start selling online to where you know most people are at today now moving over just quickly over I'm going to be talking a little bit more about like my Instagram and Facebook and my experiences with that and everything and so whenever I was mainly selling on Facebook I did not for the life of me want to make a Facebook business page why because I felt like managing a Facebook business page was so difficult to me it didn't seem as common sense and as simple as managing like your own personal one and of course you don't want to make your business page like a personal one where they have to send you requests because that's not the point the point is for you to get out there for people to see you from like everywhere and be able to like your page and follow you and see what's going on as long as they're giving you a like they would be able to see your post consecutively other than having like a private page it's more like they have to request you mm, let's see what this girl is about and then they'll check out your stuff you know and it just to me it wasn't that wasn't it for me like I knew it had to be a business page but for the longest, I debated and I didn't do it just because I, first of all, was not starting to like Facebook as much. Just on a personal level, I liked managing Instagram better, even getting on Twitter every once in a while, and then Snapchat and everything. To me, Facebook at the time was only working for my personal stuff, and even then, to be honest, I didn't even get on as much. So... That is one downside that I did not want to do, but now I will say as I've grown to make yourself all your social media platforms, I would say make yourself a legit Facebook page for your business. I would say also make yourself an Instagram page, either turn yourself into a creator or a business page as well, because it really does help to have your own separate platforms other than mixing personal with business, just because I just think that if you're doing business, business should be business. Now, talking a little bit more about TikTok. TikTok to me is a way to express what you're feeling, what you're doing, what you want to sing, what, whatever you're into, you will find it. You can be on whatever side 
part of TikTok you want. So for me on a personal level, TikTok, I did not want to make it a business just because I wanted the people to see me more on the creator side. And I decided to keep my TikTok on a creative page. It's not business and it's not personal. It's on a creator account, which I do like because I can show the behind the scenes of what I'm doing all day in the life of a business owner and all of that stuff. So I like the way that I have it set up. And of course, there's several businesses that have their own business page for their business and just strictly that. But I feel like it's a little bit more personal when people come into your lives you know as a creator and see like the behind the scenes of you running a business and then doing this and doing that and then you know all this other things that you want to share with so that's why i kept it as is after you create all your business accounts or however you want to use them and set them up as i would say please pick out a theme whatever theme you want to go for if you're more into like light colors and greens and more natural and vibes and like those type of vibes go for it but if you're more into like the girly girl and like you want pinks and purples, whatever theme you want to go for, go for it. Do your thing. But I would say try to keep it all together within your theme. Now, if you don't keep it within your theme, that's kind of where it affects it. Like I was showing you guys at the beginning whenever I was posting, I was just posting random pictures. Every single product that I would make, no matter if it was a cake topper or if it was a t-shirt or if it was a cup or if it was even a simple decal you slap on the window of your truck or your car, I was posting it. Why? Because I wanted to make sure I was known for everything. But I felt like now that I look back, I'm like, oh my god, cringe. I was just posting random crap just to post it. And not only just to post it, but because I was so proud of myself. And I wanted to tell people, hey, I also make car decals, but I also make stickers, but I also do this. So once you determine your theme on your Instagram or whatever page and you determine your aesthetic that you want to go for, after that, you need to make sure you also know what products you're going to be selling. Now... I should have probably mentioned this at the beginning. Obviously, whenever you make your business up and you come up with your name and you come up with what your service or product you're going to be having, you also want to make sure you know your aesthetic is matching everything. But also, you don't want to do too much because I feel like at the beginning, I was doing too much and I was just all over the place and I was overwhelming myself and my audience that were probably looking at my page and like, oh my God, this girl's all over the place. And it was just not okay. Um, it's okay for you to do things, but I feel like there is always a way to post things so instead of me just posting a simple decal that I would just take a picture of it like that before it was even like on the truck maybe make some sample decals where you can put on your car or make and take like a cool like picture of it to make sure me like hey I make decals obviously not everyone's gonna want that specific design for their car but that's just kind of you telling them hey i also make car decals and you can make cool looking ones that you think are nice and then maybe if someone asks you for a custom one and you're able to do it then you can offer that as well but you just don't have to post every single one that you make the whole concept is for them to understand that you make decals or for them to understand you make stickers but you don't have to specifically post every single sticker or every single design that you make just because it's not always going to fall into your theme of your Instagram or of your Facebook page. So I will admit it took me a while to learn that the aesthetic of an Instagram was everything and that's another way that I would help me gain followers and kind of grow a following on my social media platforms by taking everything more serious. So before I was just mainly posting like a natural grass pictures in the background and I would just grab a cup, take a picture of it with the grass background and I would snap it and I would just, you know, upload it as is. And then there were some days that it was gloomy outside, it was raining and it just wouldn't be that pretty green color in the background so I would come inside and just grab a poster board a white poster board and with my ring light just have good lighting and take a picture of it and then I started noticing okay this is not consecutive I'm not being like the same like there's grass pictures and then there's whiteboard pictures and then there's pink board pictures and I was just kind of all over the place and at first you think okay well as long as that individual picture looks nice it should be okay right well I took a step back and looked at the bigger picture from the outside and I was just kind of like looking through my Instagram and I was like whoa like you do see a lot of mismatched stuff you're going from a, like a green background picture to a whiteboard picture to another background type picture and it's like no that is not okay and I knew my colors for my theme or my aesthetic on my Instagram was going to be white and I wanted pink 
but at the time I didn't know what type or what tone of pink I wanted. I was just doing like dark pinks to light pinks to whites to like gray, adding gray in there. And I'm just all over the place. I finally came to the conclusion that I wanted like a light pink and whites incorporated into my aesthetic because it also matches my logo and everything. And I also recently revamped my logo. I want to think it was December whenever I finally announced my new logo, December of 2020. And that is when I came up and I started thinking more like, okay, it's going to happen. I'm going to launch it. I'm going to do like a mini rebrand, even though not a lot of people like are going to notice maybe. But the outcome was that people did notice. But once January of 2021 hit, I was officially doing it for the good and I was fixing it up. I revamped everything. I took new product pictures here in my home studio, just taking pictures of all my paleta payasos, all my micheladas, all of my clay resin keychains, just because I wanted it to have a different vibe. And boy, was the outcome crazy. The number of likes, the number of views that each post was getting compared to my old post is so crazy to think back and look and say, whoa. So that was one thing and that is one way that I grew my Instagram just by changing the style and the way I was taking my pictures and also limiting myself to what I am posting what I'm not posting I'm not just gonna randomly post a t-shirt anymore on my actual page just to post it like I did before because compared to back then and now that post isn't doing the same and I'm not saying it's just not all about the likes and all about the views and the reality of looking back and seeing like an Instagram grow and everything you do have to check those things and you do have to make sure that when you're taking a good picture it is a good quality and that you're not just taking it with the shadows and harsh lighting especially if you're going with like light colors and you want your um, Instagram aesthetic to be very airy and light and beautiful and you know all of that kind of how I'm going for you have to make sure that your pictures are top-notch and if they're not that is okay that is why the world of editing exists that is why people enhance their pictures you obviously don't want to do too much where you're like face tuning the crap out of something you know like if you're editing a picture you really don't want to make it look fake because at the end of the day when the customer gets their product it needs to look somewhat similar to the picture but what I'm saying is I don't edit the actual product itself like I don't enhance the color on my actual product what I do is I enhance the around the surrounding areas of my picture make it pop and make it look more airy and bright as I like so for example if I take a picture of a product and I can show you like some before and after pictures right here if I take a picture of a product before it looks like this and after it's gonna look like this over here it's gonna look very light bright and everything and why because I use an app called facetune which I want to talk to you guys about and that's mainly the app that I use and I always 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 make sure that if I want to take a picture and I want to enhance the brightness I'm always taking it on a white background or a light pink background where I can still enhance the color and it look more lighter than very like dark pink and you know because of the shadows so always think about that whenever you guys are editing a picture you want to enhance the lighting around it but not the actual product itself because you want to keep it as authentic as possible next thing so another way to help you grow your instagram is also when you're making a post not only that does the picture have to be top quality you also want to make sure that the caption that you're posting is also eye captivating that it's getting the customer's attention and i'm going to be showing you guys some examples of what i'm talking about so when i first started posting i started trying to get more creative i was planning out my post there is an app called Planoly, and it helps you plan your instagram feed just to make sure that everything is matching the aesthetic and everything is looking awesome you can plan out your caption your hashtags and everything and I really really do love it I have used it for example this post that I made right here and it's the paleta payaso keychains this was one of the first pictures that I took once I was revamping my Instagram aesthetic and everything just to kind of make it more eye captivating as you can see first let's talk about the picture you can see that the uh, whole idea that I was going for is just to make them kind of look like crowded and like very bright and just out there and more like detail like zooming into the actual picture 
picture so you can see what's going on and not just like one product specifically but like a whole bunch of them like cramped together i seen that aesthetic on somebody's other page and i kind of got the idea she was doing it with lip glosses and i thought it was a really cool idea like a different technique to take pictures so i kind of just took the idea and ran with it as well and my caption says paleta payaso overfill are you a paleta payaso lover then you need to pick this one up restocks blah 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 mark your calendars you don't want to miss out on our beginning of the year sale and then you you know you do your little dot 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 and then you can just like also ask your audience a question kind of for them to engage with you like comment down below and tell us which one's your favorite candy growing up and if you don't know the Paleta Payaso is a, a paleta that if you're in the Latina or Hispanic community and you don't know what this is, it's, it's crazy because a lot of us grew up eating these and that's just kind of like a little like engagement question to kind of get your audience to engage with you. And I'm not saying you have to add questions to every single post, but it is good to upload a post every once in a while and ask your, um, and ask your audience a question or have them engage with you back to, you know, for them to actually comment something back. And obviously for this one, I went ahead and just did Paleta Payaso Keychain, hashtag uh, Paleta Payaso. Again, they're all going to be hashtags. Mexican Keychains, Mexican Treats, sm Shop Small Business, Paleta Payaso Lover, Llaveros Mexicanos, um, Support Small Business. And you know, there's so much more. There's even some on Instagram that is um, Explore Page. Um, you can put like a lot of different hashtags just so you can get out there and kind of get noticed But that is one way that I started making sure that I would enhance my pictures by planning out my post on Planoly But also making sure your hashtags are relevant to what you're posting now moving into hashtags just real quick You want to make sure that your hashtags are relevant to what you're posting especially on Instagram I would say um, I know there's some different ones which we'll talk about here in a little bit whenever you're on TikTok, it's a little different different just because it goes based off a different algorithm than Instagram does and Instagram the way that you kind of get out there is whenever people are scrolling through their explore feed they are able to see you but normally if they don't follow you you're not just gonna randomly pop up on their feed like you do on TikTok the for you page so once you have your picture quality check once you have your caption that's creative getting engagement from your audience check and you have your hashtags check complete i honestly think this is a great method to boost your business into that explore page and kind of get other people to start seeing you a quickly thing that i wanted to touch base on which i have not used a lot so it's just going to be a quick thing there's also paid ads that you can also pay for an ad through instagram through facebook i think it runs to the same thing if your pages are connected you can pay for a post to become an ad and pop up on people's actual stories and things which i think will also help your business get out there but that is also a method of doing so but just spending a little bit of money you can do two dollars per day for a whole week you can do five dollars a day for a whole whatever month you can set it to however you want but you'll know through those statistics how many people are actually clicking on your link to go purchase how many people are actually coming to your actual profile to come look and look at your like stuff and things like that so i think it's very much worth a try i've done it once before and i did it just for minimal just to do like more research to see if it was going to work and it did actually work i feel like it's always going to work and reach at least it's going to reach the people that it says it will reach so if you're paying a certain amount it will tell you it's going to reach 50 people a thousand people 1200 whatever you're paying and however long you have it for instagram or facebook will tell you how many people they will get it out there to reach because it's going to pop up as an ad between their stories or between posts that they're coming up and looking up on facebook so try it out if you think it's worth it and you think like you have a little extra money to spare i really do think that it's something that can help you grow as well and of course whenever i'm on instagram i always see posts like that come up and i'm like oh wait i need stickers let me click on here oh but I, this looks good nice so Anything that's relevant to what you're normally on, it's going to pop up on your page. And also stories are just great to be engaging with people on Instagram just to kind of be, you know, posting, talking to your audience, saying, hey, an update about your shop or whatever, place your orders now or like 
this is the work that I did this week and like things that you know that you don't really want to post just because they don't match the aesthetic or whatever you can always post them on Instagram stories just because Instagram stories is a great way to engage with your people you can always ask them questions as well you can always just put random stories up of like things that you're working on busy day updates and things like that but also they delete every 24 hours so I think it's also a good way of just quickly looking at people's things and if they do follow you they obviously will see your story so I think that's a good thing now moving over to Facebook page even though I did not want to start it for the longest I actually did go ahead and make a page back in April whenever I started but I wasn't as consistent on it just because it was a drag for me to post on instagram and then post on facebook page but there is a thing where you can combine both your business page on facebook and your instagram together linked so whenever you're posting on instagram it will actually transfer over to your facebook page which makes it much easier and you're just technically posting once you will be posting one story and it can also post over to your facebook page if you are a small business owner this is a great tip for you guys to use and it will save you time and you don't have to be like ugh, I'm posting here then there because I feel like nowadays Instagram and Facebook are like what most businesses are using as like free promotion and things like that just to kind of get out there so I really do think that it's worth a shot create your both Facebook and business page link them together post on Instagram and it will automatically transfer over to your Facebook page another great way to engage with your audience is always by responding to comments liking their comments you know if they have any questions and if it's something that you feel like needs to be addressed more through a DM you can always like tell them please DM us blah 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 for whatever reason or even do responses like an app like TikTok which we'll be talking about next you can always respond to videos answering their questions and just kind of getting people to engage more into that so that's all also another great tip reels on Instagram is another great tip I wanted to mention to you guys I am barely getting started with my reels because at first I was just so confused about what they were and everything but it's basically like a TikTok video that you make down to 30 seconds and you can talk you can do voiceovers you can put music and you can just do like a behind the scenes if you're a business owner or showing off new products things like that kind of the same concept but on Instagram in 30 seconds those are also really good and I've heard a lot of people be so successful at growing their Instagram accounts with those just by posting small clips here and there and they actually do work even people that don't follow you or don't know you it can come up on their feed and that is the really cool part about reels I would really really recommend you guys trying those out for yourselves putting hashtags that make sense to what you're posting like I mentioned before research those hashtags girl and if you don't know how to research those just go up to the search engine and just type in whatever you want to look at you can just put crafting craft you can put whatever hashtag you can think of that just comes to the top of your head and you will find it once you see posts come up you can take hashtags from each post and make it your own to put onto your own post when you're posting that reel and i feel like that really really does help okay the third app that i wanted to talk about dun -da -da -da, it is TikTok. TikTok has done so much for me. It has really, really expanded my business, expanded who I am, getting myself, my product out there, and also what I teach, what I preach, and all of that. I really do love it. I probably started taking my TikTok seriously back in maybe June or July of 2020. I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head, but it was back then. I first was just posting random TikToks of me, my family, just little pranks here and there because I thought it would be funny. So it started off with my Mexican keychains that made it a hit. I just started randomly posting videos on how I was making these keychains, these badge reels, and they started to blow up. My first ever video to kind of go out there and pop off, which I was super excited about, was this one right here. It was how I made Masapan badge reels, the badge reels that I obviously offer. And it was something that I never thought I would get this many views. And I wasn't even thinking about what I was doing at the moment. I was just filming it to film. And I was doing it one-handed. So it was super hard, but I did get over 100,000 views on it. And it was my first, which I would consider semi-viral, at least for me at the time, video. And then I did a part two. And then it just started kind of going and taking off from there that people were liking my content. That's whenever I thought like, wow, I can really do something out of this. I can start getting sales from this if I keep posting 
posting on TikTok because people really like to see this type of things. And it was just like super exciting and overwhelming at the time because never did I think I would get to that point where other people would get out there. But that's the great wonders of TikTok that you can post and you can come up on anybody's feed. They can automatically follow you, like your post, comment, do more engagement, and that helps the algorithm to kind of boost you and get you on the For You page more. Obviously, again, going back to hashtags, which I've already talked about, it's the same process. You want to make sure that you're choosing some that are relevant to your post. But the thing for on TikTok is that some people also put trending hashtags on there. And trending hashtags also help. You just have to search up on the search bar and you will see the trending hashtags with how many views they have. And a lot of people like to use those as well just to kind of boost it and get it on the For You page, which also works. I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think that I rather prefer to use more relevant ones to my posts just to kind of make it look more authentic and real and not so you know not real like it feel more like a clickbait video or something where they're clicking on it for a different reason and it's not what they want to see i know in my opinion i don't really like doing that but i will admit i had done that in the past and it does work as well so do what you want with what you will I'll talk a little bit more about how I went viral. I just started posting those type of videos and it just kind of like went crazy from there. I started getting a lot of DMs on Instagram, people wanting my micheladas, people wanting the agua frescas eventually. I got over a million views on that and it was just getting crazy. And at that point, I can tell you I was doing something right. I was super successful in what I was doing. I was getting people in traffic to go over to my Instagram to go follow me, to go make sure that they keep up with what I'm posting for any future launches, any future restocks. So I really do think that's something that helps. A lot of people don't like TikTok just because they feel like discouraged by it. They don't feel like they're good enough, like they can film videos. But honey, have you seen that first video that I posted? I was doing it one-handed. I didn't even know what I was filming. I was just filming to film. And I just chose whatever Mexican music that I thought that would match the aesthetic, which now I look at it and I'm like, okay, maybe I could have done something different. But like, I'm telling you, it's the wonders of of TikTok like you just never know you can post something as simple as you looking at the screen and you can go viral for something so dumb and I'm not saying it's dumb because it's not dumb to all people but for me I'm just saying like it's, it's just an example like what you can go viral for is crazy out there so never think that your content or your products are not good enough because what might not be for that person might be for all these other 10 people over here they might be liking what you're filming so never get discouraged also another quick thing you will also always have haters especially on TikTok you'll have trolls commenting on your stuff but you know what you need to go past that view past that because let me tell you girl they're giving you that view and if they're giving you that view you're doing something right for them to be jumping on your content to be looking at your stuff Another quick tip that I will mention is that you can't be shy, you can't be scared to grow. Once you start seeing that side of you growing and you're seeing like people are interested in what you're doing, I feel like people start to break more out of their shell and they start liking doing like lives and like showing their face and things. If you are scared, it's not going to get you anywhere. You need to make sure that you're able to get out there and be known and have the confidence that you need. Doing lives, you guys, is such a great way to get out there and be known when you are on a live you're essentially engaging with your audience you're talking about whatever you're doing either of that's crafting like what i'm doing most of the time when i'm crafting i'm engaging with my followers they're asking me questions about business related questions about what i'm doing about just random things you are able just to talk to them like if there's someone in front of you what i get a lot whenever i am on a live is people are always like oh my god i feel like i'm with a friend just chit chatting away just talking to them and i feel like we're on facetime that is what i want you guys to think of me as a friend as a virtual friend that you guys can come to me and chit chat with me either if that's through youtube either if that's through the comments messages whatever i love to engage with you guys i think lives not only do they help you guys engage i feel like they also help you with sales so whenever you're making something or you're prepping something for your business whatever it could be i feel like people are looking at that and you are able to gain sales from that as well so that's also growing your business growing your social media because they'll give you a follow and i think like at the end of the day you'll get a benefit of both so you guys should really try that out and i know there's a lot of people out there they're like oh my god lives are not for me but trust me we will all get there you'll break out of your shell and you'll start doing lives and you'll start to feel way way more comfortable with it i know one thing and i always tell everyone once they ask me for tips like how do you how how can we grow how can we do this i'm always telling people you need to show your face you need to show who you really are don't 
act to be someone that you're not you need to show your authenticity because people like to see that and they like to see everything so it's like you need to show who you really are and what you represent and if this is your culture and if this is what you want to represent and if this is the type that things that you believe in there's always going to be people that are going to be right behind you to stand firm with you so i'm just saying be yourself be you use relevant hashtags and just do your thing and let me tell you one day you are gonna pop off another thing i will mention on tiktok it's so much easier to grow your platform on there than instagram and i don't know what the algorithm is like on instagram i just feel like on instagram it's a little bit harder out of nowhere to be seen and on tiktok it's like they have a whole for you page and people are just scrolling and they find just random stuff that come up on their newsfeed. So I feel like that's why it's much easier to grow on there than Instagram. Because compared to the followers that I have on my TikTok, which is over 140,000, I would never imagine myself right now getting to the point on that on Instagram. I probably have close to 6,000 on Instagram. And it's been such a journey just to get there. It has been a full year now and I am there and I know other accounts grow much quicker but it's just depending on you yourself how much dedication passion you put into it to make sure you're getting out there so moving on now for tiktok videos a lot of people always tell me how do you edit i can't edit it's so hard this and this blah 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 trust me it is super hard now link down below i have a link to all the tripods that i use that help me make my filming much easier and also for my youtube videos for my tiktok youtube videos any instagram reels all of my tripods help me so much because i've came to the conclusion that you just can't film with one hand and work with the other it's super hard so with these tripods that are linked in my amazon favorites you can all get them at an affordable price and they are so convenient and if you know me i am a hardcore tripod lover i have all types and they all work for different angles so you guys need to first get yourself a good tripod that would work again amazon for filming most of the time i'm filming from my normal camera on my iphone and to edit them i use this app called in shot i've seen a lot of reviews and a lot of other people talk about it whenever they're talking about editing their tiktok videos and you just feel like it is very simple to learn super easy to film it on your phone edit on there and then just post on to tiktok add your song and boom you're ready to go and if you need to do a voiceover you can also do it from that app or you can do it directly from the tiktok app and that is one of my best editing apps that i like to use especially when filming and editing short videos for social media i love that app so much so you guys need to go ahead and check it out and for the most secret part of them all and i've never given this out information so you're hearing it first here i use this website called snaptick.app and I love this one because it helps you remove the watermarks from your TikTok videos so you are able to repost onto other social media platforms. And just so it can feel more natural that you filmed it but you really didn't do it twice and it helps a lot. So I really do like it. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how it works. So here it is like you guys are watching here and you just have to paste the link from the TikTok video into this and it converts it and removes the watermark. So normally whenever you go onto your TikTok and you want to choose a random video, let's go ahead and say you're choosing this one and you save it. When you save it, you're going to see that it is going to save with the TikTok watermarks. But if you actually just go to those three little dots, you put copy link and you go over to the snaptick.app, you go ahead and paste the link in there. And once you go ahead and push the blue download button, it's going to download it and it's going to remove the watermarks from it. So I think that is super cool. And I'm like, why didn't I find this earlier? And I can't remember exactly who I found it from, if it was TikTok or if it was like a YouTube video or something. But you can go to the first server. I usually just go download server VIP or whatever first server it comes up with. And then I hit download. Once you hit download, you will go up to your little download button and you'll see it no watermarks no watermarks are there yes like i said you guys are the first to hear about this because this is a hidden gem and i think it's really cool that i'm able to share these things with you now when i go over to my um camera roll you'll see that one actually does have the tiktok watermarks on it and that's the one i just downloaded straight from tiktok and this other one that shows perfect quality and it does not have the TikTok watermarks anymore. So it gives me a good resolution video to go ahead and post over to my other socials. 
One last thing I will say about TikTok and just make sure that when you're scrolling through the For You page, save sounds that you think are relevant and that you can use for the future for your actual TikTok videos. I usually just go ahead and save into my favorites or any videos that you think that you can kind of duet, replicate in the future and that you can come up with an idea of your own. I save them to my favorites as well and I feel like that really does help a lot when planning out your content for the next couple of days or weeks or so. So I really do think that helps. My last and final tip that I want to go ahead and give you guys, and this goes for any social media platform that you want to help grow, I will say sending items to influencers or sending items to people that you look up to that have a good amount of followers and that you're really interested in you really do think that your products and their vibe matches i would suggest you guys sending packages to people because they are always able to do an unboxing either for their youtube channel for their insta stories or anything that they are giving you credit towards and i really do think that helps you boost your sales i do think that is a great great feature and i know a lot of people will do it as long as they're even posting a little instagram story a snapchat whatever it might be it will always help bring in traffic for the most part i've seen it happen i've done it i've seen people send me things and i've you know reviewed them on my tiktok or my snapchat or whatever my instagram and it has helped them grow and they even come back and they're like oh my god i'm getting so many sales thank you so much so if that's something that you are comfortable with and you could afford to give out free products every now and then, I'm, I'm not saying every single time, but if you are able to afford to do that, I would recommend doing that 100%. I think it is worth it. You can get a positive outcome from it and I really do think it's awesome and I know I said this was gonna be my last one but I forgot about it doing giveaways you guys doing giveaways are really really good giveaways are so awesome because you're able to also give back to your community to your audience to your followers but also help you gain followers and as long as they stay loyal to you and they're there they will help you boost your sales they will help you boost the number of followers and everything the number of likes the number of views that you're getting because they're constantly gonna be looking at your stuff so I really do think doing a giveaway whenever it is necessary maybe once you hit a milestone of yours or maybe whenever you hit every thousand follower you can do a giveaway however you think is awesome doing that really does help a lot and last of all be humble remember we all start off somewhere we don't always just you know start off overnight and you're at this many followers or this successful but that's one thing that i do want to encourage every one of you guys if you guys are a small business if you guys were ever to grow make sure you guys give back to your community to your audience once you're able to give back that's awesome another thing that i like to do is i'm so so thankful for where i'm at that i'm always helping people giving them tips giving them tricks that's just something inside me that i've learned that the teaching side is what i like as well so i constantly am always helping others either if that's on my lives or anything always be humble no matter how big or how successful you get just remember where you come from but that is it for today you guys if you guys have any other topics that you guys want me to touch base on please let me know down in the comments down below and i am happy to film that for you guys because if you guys i'm here so i will see you guys in my next one bye